Okay, folks, what we're going to talk about today is a bad variable speed motor. This particular system is a Bryant unit slash carrier. I want you to look at that squirrel cage. See how it rolls? And it stops. Rolls, stops. Okay. Okay, what it's trying to do, the ECM motor is trying to ramp up with speed, but the uh, module is burnt up inside. So this motor has to be replaced. So if you get into a situation where you see a motor trying to spin, it means the module is bad. Now see it kicked out. So what happened? The actual the unit kicked out on overload. There it goes. It's going to try it again. It'll, it'll kick out in just a moment. See what happens? Okay. So anyway, so we're going to replace the motor here, okay? So I want you to look at this. If you see this situation in the future, you just need to pull out the motor and replace it. Okay, folks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this variable speed motor. I want you to look at the plugs. I'm going to pull the one at the top, and also I just want you to notice this has four prongs, okay? And this one has six prongs. What I want you to actually understand here is, and it has five by the way, these are foolproof plugs. You can't plug this one down here, it won't fit. You can't plug this one up here, it won't fit, okay? So you can't mess this up. So you just unplug your plugs. I've already taken the liberty of moving my screws for my housing. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop it loose. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to take this ground wire off. Somebody actually did a good job grounding the frame. I'm just going to pull it out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to take the motor loose and I'm going to replace it with this motor. This is an exact replacement motor. We're going to talk about how I know this was bad. We're going to do the ohms check, DC voltage check. We're going to do all that here in just a moment. Okay? Okay. I, I, want, I pulled the motor out of the attic and I want you to look how rusty this thing is. This thing's pretty corroded. A lot of times people have a hard time trying to get these out. So what I recommend is we're going to use some PB Blaster. Uh, you're going to use uh, WD-40. There's, there's all types of oil. Uh, Rust Buster on the market. So I'm just going to spray this thing here with, with PB Blaster. I'm going to give it a chance to soak. See how it kind of goes down inside the shaft? Watch this. I'm going to be generous with it. Don't cost that much. Trust me, it's going to save you a lot of headache. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take sandpaper and I'm going to sand this as close as I can to the shaft here, down at the bottom particularly, so I can get a good start on it. We'll go all the way around it. Sometimes you don't have to do this because we're not quite... Okay, I'm gonna try to. Sh I'm gonna. I'm gonna sand this thing. See how it's starting to clean up here. Okay, I'm just gonna sand it down. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna use a little more PB blaster in this case. Prep time is what's gonna save you a lot of trouble, guys. And I want you to look how the shaft looks. We'll put a little bit more right there. I'm 
Okay, then we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna take my wrench. I'm actually gonna use a crescent wrench to loosen this bolt right here. Take crescent. The way you use a crescent, you open it up, take your thumb, and when you get to your nut, you actually tighten it on and you pull it, okay? Okay, so I've taken sandpaper and I've just oiled the shaft and I've loosened my nut. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side here. Take the drill. I'm gonna take my nuts out here very carefully. Okay, now here's where we're gonna find out if this is gonna come out easy enough. Sometimes you gotta take a hammer and beat on this thing a bit. Give me a hammer. Okay, now what I've done here is I've loosened this up, this side here. And what I what I actually have done, I, I pulled it out, pushed it in, pulled it out, and I loosened the rust up because my oil has eaten through the rust now. So I should be able to pull it right up. I just want to demonstrate. So what I've done is I took it and I actually run it up down through there and I just eat that little bit of rust off right there. Okay, guys? So now we're ready to pull off. We call this a belly band. So I'm going to pull the belly band loose. And all you're going to do here is just basically just loosen it up just enough to get it off this motor. Then we're going to slide another. One thing I always like to do is measure the uh, distance here from the belly band. So I'm going to get a measuring tape here. Okay, so we're at about, I want you to look at this very closely, three and a quarter inches. Okay, three and a quarter. That way we know when we put the new motor in and we set the belly band the same distance down, it's going to fit right in the housing perfectly, okay? So we're at three and a quarter inches. Of course a deep well socket would work much better, it's just I don't have it with me at this point in time. I'll have it for the uh, strap on the other one. Trying to take the fast way out, guys. I apologize. Okay, folks. I went ahead and put the belly band on, and I just want to talk about this, okay? I measured from the top of my belly band, which was three and a quarter inches, okay? I, I orientated the motor just for your benefit here. So when I put my belly band back on and I put my legs in, I had measure the legs where I'm going because you always got to keep in mind your plugs, where you have to plug in your modular plug, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is get everything set and have your plugs over here or over here, okay? So I measured everything. I took my time. I've got my screws in. I've got my legs firmly attached. All I'm going to do now is tighten up these bolts. And I actually just loosened the bolts. I just got them started so I can have a little play. You don't want to torque them all down. Just take a little, little time here. Okay, everything's good and snug. Now what you want to do, you want to turn it over and you want to roll your housing. See, now I want you to look down inside of this thing. 
See how the blower, the squirrel cage is to the one side or the other? So you got to make sure you adjust your squirrel cage so you have the kind of even distance on the housing itself. Okay? Because that thing's got to roll, so it has to make sure you have some distance. If you don't, if it hits the side, it's going to burn it up. So now I have turned it around. Next thing I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to find the flat part of my shaft, which is right here. So I'm going to align the nut to the flat part of the shaft, right there, see? This is where I torque it down. So I'm going to grab my wrench. Don't over tighten it, you'll break the nut off, okay? Just, just torque it down. It'll hold well enough. Now I want you to look, I've got it tight, I'm just going to snug it a little bit more, okay? Okay, now I'm just going to test run my housing. Once again, I'm going to look down here, I'm just going to take my hand, I'm going to... Alright, so that should run perfectly. Okay, now I'm going to carry it back up and put it in, guys. Okay, I basically came up here, I took the motor, you've got little grooves, you got little tracks here, I want you to see that the actual fan it sets in right there. Okay, watch this as I push it in. It just goes right in, just push it all the way back. Okay, it's in. Perfect. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the metal bracket piece on. And that's going to tie everything back together, okay? I'm going to do that for you, then we're going to turn it back on. I'm going to show you how to wire in the uh, plug. Okay, now what I've done here, I had four screws holding my bracket in for my fan. I want you to look at these. Now I want you to notice that I didn't tighten none of this down. I got them all started. If you tighten your screws down as you go, you're going to be fighting against yourself, and that's the last thing you want to do. So I've got them all started, and all I'm going to do now is tighten them down. Just torque them down. Uh, you notice this second screw here has a, a ground wire to it, right here? That's to uh, carry the static charge off the motor. That's very important. So anytime you have a ground, make sure you use it, guys. It's not put on there for anything else but a purpose. It's not put on for looks. Okay, now we're getting ready to do the plug in. I just want to show you one more thing here on the plugs. The motor come with this plug. This here is an adapter plug. For some reason you get a motor that doesn't have the same adapters as what comes with it. This here is an adapter plug and this actually will go on the top. Okay, But we know we're good so we don't need this. I'm just going to toss over here out of the way. So I'm going to come over here and once again earlier today I said it's foolproof. Voila! It's in. You notice how you've got the curvature up? up. So it's a one-way plug. You can't mess it up. you got the round at the top and flat at the bottom. Same with the other one. You always want to kind of tug on them, make sure they're tight. Don't pull on the wires. You may pull them out of the prongs themselves, but they're tight. I heard them snap. Okay, now we're going to get ready. We're going to start this bad boy up. Okay, now we've turned it on. The board's calling for cooling. Let's give it just a minute here, see if we have success. And we may be on a five minute time delay with the thermostat, so we'll just wait a second. All right, here it winding. Okay, can you see it? If you look at it closely, it's going to ramp up the speed here. Okay, you can't tell it guys, but it is running. All we've talked about today was a variable speed motor and how to replace a variable speed motor, okay? The bottom line is when I came up here, the thing was trying to turn. It 
couldn't turn. These things are, are turning with DC powered motors. If you have any questions, give us a call at Jones Air Conditioning, 239-596-5855. Go to jonesairconditioning.com. If you like this, please share, please subscribe, and please comment. Thank you.